Okay. So, you had a separate review that I gave you. Who found something you weren't sure about on the review? Drew? Uh, I'm going to get 22. 22. Uh, the solve problem? Yes. Okay. So we are looking at 22. Do I have a review? <laughs> well, you want me to go back there and see if there's any extras back there in that crate that says honors on it. Okay. So 22 says solve this equation. And this would be on the no calculator part of the um, test. Okay? Don't need a calculator for this one. Sometimes we do, but if we're not going to use a calculator, then there must be a way to get a common base. So I think the first thing I'll do is divide out that 7. sense to everybody divide both sides by seven get rid of that and what's special so you got two to a power over here what's special about four uh, it's two squared okay so i can rewrite that as two squared and i can write this one as two squared to the three x <coughs> right now these are both two well let's go ahead and take care of that so that's going to be 2 squared times 2 to the 6x. I'm going to multiply those two. Now, what happens here when I have a 2 times a 2? What do I do with those exponents? Add them. So now I have 2 to the x minus 1 equal 2 to the 2 plus 6x. Right? So what can I do now? If 2 to that power equals 2 to that power, don't these have to match? So x minus 1 equals 2 plus 6x. So 5x equals negative 3. I got negative 3 fifths if I did that right. Make sense? Now, that problem is not possible without a calculator unless you can get a common base. So if it's on the no calculator part, then you want to find a common base. What would I do if I couldn't get a common base? Use logarithms, right? But you can do that without a calculator. Okay, who else? Good question. Who else found something that we need to do? Uh, I knew this would happen. Can we do uh Jacob? 23. 23. Because you just now looked at it and thought, oh gosh, that looks hard? Yeah. Right. yeah. Like Guys, if you don't practice, I mean, you're, there's no sympathy. You have got to buck up here and get this, spend some work, time, and effort on this. This is exactly the same kind of problem. Exactly. So I'm the no calculator part, so I have to be able to get a common base. So when I look at these numbers, aren't all these numbers, all of them powers of three? So you could divide both sides by three if you wanted. It's not required at all because three is a power of three. But if you wanted to kind of cut down a little bit on stuff, you could divide both sides by three. Now, if you're going to make all the powers the same, I mean, all the bases, not powers, all the bases the same, you already said they're all powers of three, so let's go with three. What's one third? Three to what power? Negative one. one. And that's three to the first, and that's three cubed to the x plus seven. So what do I do when I have a double exponent? So negative x plus 4. And then this is going to be 3 to the first times 3 to the 3x plus 21. And then what do I do when I have a 3 times a 3? 
atom. So I have three to the negative x plus four equals three to the three x plus 22. And as soon as I get something that looks like that, three to a power equals three to a power, I can just set them equal to each other and solve. So it looks like four x equals negative 18. suggest you do is just draw a little sketch up. So you look at the equation and the first thing, actually there's a couple things you notice, but one thing you notice is that guy right there is less than one, right? Which means this is going to be a okay. Unless that would happen to be negative, which is not. So my picture is going to look something like this. Okay, so what are my options? F of x is increasing. No, f of x is decreasing. So it's got to be C or D. Decreasing and concave down or decreasing and concave up? Concave up, decreasing and concave. But guys, you have got to spend time studying. You're just looking at these problems now and saying, oh, you know, maybe that one looks interesting. I'm okay with that, but that isn't going to be good enough for tomorrow. I'm telling you right now that you haven't taken some of this review seriously and it's going to bite you tomorrow because you're not going to get it done. That's how you got to click through it tomorrow. All right, so what does this mean? What is happening? It's an exponential, and I know f of three is 24, and I know if I divide, this is like f of four divided by f of three, for example. What does that tell me? It tells me the ratio of consecutive terms is two, which means B is two. That's what that means. That means to get from this term to this term, I multiply by two. So now I know that my equation looks like A times two to the X. And I know that if Y is 24, then X is three. So 24 equals eight A, so A is three. So my equation is three times two to the x. 18, uh, 18 would be c, correct? I have no idea. Which is equivalent to 100 <coughs> times nine to the x. Okay, so I have 100 times nine to the x. And I wanna know is that the same as, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and simplify that a little bit and see if I can figure it out from here. So 9 is 3 squared. So that would be 100 times 3 to the 2x. Is that option? Yeah. 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 So it is C. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> yep, Ellen. Can you do 11? in the general form, so we're doing another exponential. And we want A and B are positive constants. Okay? So remember, what this means is 4 to the x times 4 to the negative second, doesn't it? because those exponents would be added. Well, what's four to the negative second? One over, one 
I would be seeing. So this is 1 16th times 4 to the x. So what's A? 1 16th. What's B? 4. All done. So B would be the same thing. It's 2 times 6 to the x plus 1, which is 2 times 6 to the x times 6 to the 1. So it's 12 times 6 to the x. And then C, same thing, 3, 16 to the 1 half x. So that's 3 times 16 to the 1 half to the x. Remember, when you have that double exponent, we've done this a lot, when you have that double exponent, you can separate the exponents and make it 16 to the 1 half and then to the x. So this is 3 times 4 to the x, and that would be your number. So what does that tell me? The resid if the residual is negative, a negative number, that means whatever model we're using over overestimated at x equals three. So the model overestimated the y value, whatever it is, the function value. Equals three by 0.30952. So I don't know if that's dollars or minutes or what. I don't know what the unit is, but I know it's an overestimation by that much. How do I know it's an overestimation? Because residual is actual minus predicted or model. And if that's negative, that means the model is bigger than the actual. <coughs> okay. Anna? Uh, that's oh, that has a little star next to it. That would be a calculator problem. That would be on the calculator part. We've done, this is our third review. We've done a whole bunch of problems with the calculator and a whole bunch without. This would be a calculator. So a sub three is 10, a sub seven is 16. I need to find a sub n and a sub 13. And the sequence is geometric in part B. Okay, we had one like this on one of our other reviews. So, 10 and 16 are my terms. This is the third, this is the seventh. If this is geometric, I need to know what I have to multiply to get from the third term to the seventh term. Do I need to multiply it four times? Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So something has to be multiplied four times. I'll call it R. Has to be multiplied three times to get a total product of 16 tenths or 8 fifths if you want to reduce that. So what is my ratio? Well, this is why you need a calculator because who knows what the 4 3 16 tenths is. So 
I got 1.1247 as my R value. For this, there, there is, there's other ways to do the problem, but meat and potatoes, hands down, always works. That's the formula for geometric sequence. However, if I use that formula, then I have to figure out what my first term is. But that's easy. If this is my ratio, how could I get back? Here's my third term. Here's my second term. How could I get back to my first term? No, oh, I don't subtract. I divide, right? I divide. This is geometric, so I need to divide. So 10 divided by my answer squared, that would be two of those, looks like it's 7.9057. So that's my first term. My ratio is this guy to the n minus first. <coughs> so that would be one um, formula. And then the 13th term, I'll just plug 12 in here. flip that so it's two-thirds to the x. So that's going to be a decay, but because of the negative, it's flipping it over. So I need one that looks like that. I have one that looks like that. So that's Okay, so this is, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It did not take very long to do that problem, right? You are not going to be able to sit and stew over these. You're going to have to know this material well enough to crank through this, because some of the problems will take longer. All right, what else? How much time do you have? You have a period, and that's what you have. And it's four pages front and back. Now, 
granted, the multiple choice take up a lot of space. So it's not like there's a zillion problems, but it's more than you had. You're going to have to move. Which one? Two. Is this thing even odd or neither? need to see what I get when I put negative x in. So if I plug in negative x, uh, what am I going to get? Negative x cubed minus 4x plus 2. Is that the same as the original? Nope. Is it the opposite of the original? Nope. So therefore this function is neither because that didn't work and that didn't function to give the distance after the car was pulled back m millimeters. So in other words, we want to build a formula where our input variable is going to be millimeters instead of centimeters. Okay? So this is like one of our half-life problems, right? So what is your thought? I, I'm going to have to do something in my X moment, right? Where am I going to do this? Ten divided by ten. And I'll go ahead and change that. That's, this is now, now going to be a millimeters formula. So, as this was when I put 5 in there. 
Why are you shaking your head no? What's 10 into 50, people? Oh, wait. Is that is 10 not be there on the top? Like, without, that's oh, that 10. I stuck that in, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to recalculate. Sorry. This was our equation, right? That's for the seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now it's going to match, but I got the wrong number in there. Thank you. 0. 0.25 times 1.3. Okay, did you get 12.796? Yes. Yeah. That's the original, that's the original equation, which didn't have a 10 in it, stuck the 10 in So now we're doing 50 millimeters, and I don't even need to type it in because that's going to cancel and be exactly the same calculation. So this is the correct formula. D of, I'll say M, is 0.25, 1.3, 3m over 10. Is that what I have? Yeah. There it is. in here first. That's my personal style. You can do whatever you want. Um, but if I simplify in there, I'll have 3 over 4. And then B is on A on the bottom and B to the 7th on the bottom because those are going to come down because the x component is negative. What does that do? Flips it. So now I'm going to have 4A B to the 7th over 3, and I'm going to square the whole shebang. So 16a squared b to the 14th over 9. We'll do this one right after.